We spent yesterday talking about distance, position, and time. We identified them as vectors or scalars, and we learned how to find distance, position, and time in various problems. Today, we want to talk about two more terms with regards to kinematics, speed and velocity. We all have a kind of an intuitive notion as to what speed and velocity is, but we might not know exactly what they are or how we might find them. Speed, we're going to define pretty loosely as how fast something is moving, how fast something moves, or the distance divided by the time. The distance that something moves over the amount of time that it took to move that distance. Now, speed, you might think would have the symbol S, but it doesn't. Speed has the symbol V. That's a small V, a lowercase V. If you had a big V, that would stand for something called electric potential or gravitational potential. It means something completely different. So let's make sure that we make that a lowercase V. What do you think the units would usually be for speed? If it's defined as the distance divided by the time. Yeah, it's meters per second. Now, it can be kilometers per hour as well. Miles per hour, centimeters per hour if it's a snail, whatever. But the standard units are meters per second. Our go-to units are, if in doubt, use these units are meters per second. Because meters per second will always work for us, whereas some of those other units will only sometimes work for us. Now, you're going to tell me whether speed is a vector or a scalar. There is a way to determine whether speed is a vector or a scalar simply by looking at the board right now. Okay. Is your hand up? Okay. Why would you say it's a vector? Because it's a V? Okay. Okay. Yeah, got it. Uh, okay, good. That's not the way I was thinking of actually but that works. It is a scalar, and, it's, and it is because it's related to distance and time, which are both scalars, yeah? But there's one more uh, way that's even maybe a little bit more obvious to us here. There's no little arrow over top of the V, right? We know that it's a scalar because there's no little arrow on top of the V. That's not why it's a scalar. Like, Riley, your reason gives us the reason why it is a scalar. But no vector sign over the V just is an indication to us that it's not a vector, that it's a scalar. Velocity, we're going to define a little bit better. Velocity, we're going to define as the rate of change in position. The rate of change of position. How quickly the position is changing. The symbol for velocity is going to be, oh, wait a second, that's the same thing. We can't have the same thing, right? Speed and velocity aren't the same thing. They're close. What do you think I'm going to add to this to make it different? A little arrow over top of it, right? The units, of course, are going to be meters per second. And vector scalar? It's a vector. Yeah. By Riley's logic in the last one, it's going to be a vector because it's related to position, which is a vector, right? Now, we can determine that it's a vector pretty easily without even remembering a definition, simply by looking at the symbol, V with a little half arrow over top of it. So we've done a couple equations here. What's this? Speed or velocity? Speed. It's a distance divided by the time. That's why the units are meters per second, because it's distance divided by the time. Velocity, well, it's the rate of change in position. What's the change in position defined as? Displacement. Yeah, it's displacement, good. Well, anything that's a rate, anything that's a rate, has time on the bottom. So if it's the rate of change of position, then it's going to be displacement or change of position over time.
Now, here comes the first time that you have to actually do a little bit of algebra. This is grade 10 math. Actually, you do a little bit of it before grade 10, but like, if you haven't taken math 20 yet, okay, how many people have, how many people are in math 20 right now? Haven't, haven't finished math 20, just started math 20. You should be absolutely fine. Okay, if you know math 10, everything we do here in physics 20, including algebra and trigonometry and everything else, everything else you will have covered in math 10. You should be fine. Don't worry about it. But even if you've gone through math 10, some people don't like algebra. Some people aren't very good at it. We want to rearrange these equations to solve for other variables. Now, we'll just pick one to do because they're both going to be the same, right? We're going to rearrange them both the same way. Let's say I want to solve for delta D. How am I going to solve for delta D? Well, I start with the equation V is equal to delta D over delta T or V with the arrow is delta D with the arrow over delta T. I don't want to get D by itself. I got to get rid of the T. I've divided by T. How do I get rid of it? How do I take it to the other side, Colton? Yeah. Uh, no. No, I don't times it by speed. But you, you, know, you had half a right. You times it by T. You times both sides by T, right? V times T, and then D over T times T. So that has the effect. Look, these cancel, right? That has the effect of just T disappearing. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to say D is equal to V times T. Usually I end up writing it like this on the other side. But it doesn't really matter which term is on which side. So you want to solve for D, multiply by T. You've divided by T, you've got to get rid of the T. So you do the opposite, you multiply by T. Now, what if I wanted to solve for T? I do exactly what I just did, solve for D. And then... I have to get rid of the V. Because this is the one that's attached to the T, right? How do I get rid of the V? It's multiplied by T. How do I get rid of the V? Divide by, Colton, divide by what? Want to solve for T? The V is attached to T. I divide by T. No, 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 sorry. The other one. V. There you go. So we're going to say D over V is equal to V over T, well, over V, right? But those cancel. So I'm left with T is equal to D over V. The thing is, it's been a little while for us, right? Like, you know, you take math, you know, math 10, which is really when you do this stuff, algebra, like say first semester of grade 10, and it's like, or even second semester grade 10. Here it is, second semester grade 11. It's like, it's been a while. Like, we forget these things, right? That's normal. That's normal, as long as it comes back to us, right? If you want to get rid of a term, you do the opposite to that term. Like, in the first case, we wanted to get rid of T. So, we want to solve for D to get, by getting rid of T. So, we had to multiply by T. In the second one, we wanted to solve for t, so we need to get rid of v. Well, v was multiplied by t, so we have to divide by v. Get rid of the one that is attached to it by doing the opposite. You want to get rid of uh, t, then multiply by t. You want to get rid of v, then divide by v. These are the three forms of the equation that you're going to end up using today and going forward. Now, there is one thing that I want you to remember here. These equations, both of these equations, only one of which, by the way, is on your data sheet. This one is on your data sheet. But really, how hard is the other one to remember? If you look on your data sheet and see the second one, like you can figure out the first one, right? Remember that these are only valid. Both of these are only valid for constant...
or average speed or velocity, depending on the equation. So if the question is accelerating and you want to find how fast it's moving after it accelerates, can't use this. If you drop a rock from the top of a cliff and you want to find out how fast it's moving or how, or how long it takes the rock to hit the ground, can't use these because it's accelerating, it's speeding up because of gravity, right? These are only valid if the object isn't changing speed or maybe it is changing speed, but you're asked to solve for the, the average velocity. Average or constant velocity or speed. Okay, good. In other words, we would say it's valid in uniform motion. That's what that means. Uniform motion means constant velocity or constant speed. First example. It's actually example number three, but first example with this topic. It says Regina is 60, 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Calgary is 1350 west of Winnipeg. It takes a car and a driver eight hours to get from Regina to Calgary. What's the car's average speed? What's the car's average velocity? Let's break down what we've got here. Regina is six. Oh, well, let's uh, actually let's identify uh, positives and negatives first. Let's say west is negative. Okay. Regina is six hundred kilometers west of Winnipeg. Is that where Regina is? Yes. That Regina hasn't gone anywhere. Some people may want Regina to go away, but it hasn't. It hasn't and it won't. This is where Regina is. This is a position. So we're going to say initial position. Right? A car and a driver starts in Regina, goes to Calgary. The initial position is negative 600 kilometers. My final position, Calgary, DF, we're going to say, is negative 1,350 kilometers. Right? This is where the car and the driver end out. Like, not how far they've gone, but where they end. The final position. Oh, we got a time here. I'm going to call time 8.0 hours. I've made a delta T as opposed to T. It's not really a big deal, but I've made a delta T because it's a time interval, right? T, like I could say, look, T, it is... 9.44 a.m. This is the time, right? Delta T is an interval. There has been, what, uh, 68 minutes, 69 minutes since the beginning of class. Okay, so T is a moment in time. Delta T is the interval. We're almost always in physics talking about the interval. So if in doubt, go delta T. All right, what are we looking for in the first question? We can use these givens, by the way, for both of them. What are we looking for in the first question? Average speed, right? Well, what's the equation for average speed? You remember? V equals delta D over delta T. Distance over time. What's the distance traveled? Yeah, you know? 750 kilometers. Oh, it's negative, though, isn't it, because we went west? No, it's not. Trick question. Why is the distance not negative? Because what? Yeah, because it's distance, and it's a scalar. There's no direction, right? So my distance is 750 kilometers, and my time is 8.0 hours. That gives me, I believe it was 93.3? Sorry? 93.75. Okay, we're actually going to round that to 94. 94 kilometers per hour. 93.75 or 94 kilometers per hour. Anybody know why I'm rounding it to 94? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. You learn a little bit about the science 10? 
Look, this has three digits. This has four digits. This has two digits. Three, four, and two. Chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Okay, my weakest link here is two digits. My final answer should be rounded to two digits. I'm not going to take off marks for you yet if you mess up on significant figures. Okay, that's not our focus right now, but we'll still talk about them. We still want you to get them right. We're just not going to take off marks yet if you get those wrong. All right, what about the average velocity? Well, the equation for average velocity is displacement divided by time. Right, displacement divided by time. What's my displacement? I should probably remember now, think back to yesterday and earlier in our review today. Displacement is, well, I can add, add what? Displacements or subtract. I got positions here, don't I? So let's subtract my positions. DF minus DI over my time. So I'm going to say negative 1350, subtract negative 600, uh, what is that, negative 750 divided by 8 hours, that's going to give me, oh, 94, negative 94 kilometers per hour. You see why I'm kilometers per hour, right? Because I use kilometers and hours. That's not the standard units, but it's okay here. I'll tell you later on when it's not okay. What does the negative mean? Well, I defined west as negative, right? So that means it's 94 kilometers per hour to the, to the west, right? Right? Make sense? Next one, number four, our last example of the day. It says a hiker walks 300 meters east and then 1,200 meters west. Takes the hiker 1,800 seconds. What's the hiker's average speed and velocity? Um, 300 meters east. Let's first of all let's make east positive and west negative. I want to circle east and west. It doesn't really matter if you circle them. I suppose if you already identify positive and negative there. What do we got here? 300 meters east. Is this where the hiker is? Is this where the hiker is? No, it's not. So therefore, it must be what? Displacement, not position, but rather displacement. So we're going to say, let's say D, delta D1 is positive 300 meters. And I'm going to say delta D2, not D2, delta D2 is equal to negative 1,200 meters. And my time interval here is 1,800 seconds. Okay, I want to find the average speed. Speed, distance over time. What's my distance traveled here? What's my distance? I went from 300, to, um, I, I, I traveled 300, and then I traveled to 1,200. What's my distance traveled? What's it? 1,500. Yeah. But wait, wait, this is a negative 1,200. 300, yeah. You got to add them together. But we drop the negative when we're finding distance, right? Because distance is a scalar. So we're going to say 300 plus 1,200 over 1,800 seconds. So that's, uh, what, 1,500 meters divided by 1,800 seconds. Is that we're good to be? We get 0 0.833. What are the units? Yeah, we use meters and seconds, so my units here would be meters per second, the standard units. Now, see, this is three digits. Some people get confused and think that's four digits. It's not. Okay, the zeros in front don't count. Zeros at the end do, but zeros in the front don't count. This is three digits. Those two zeros count because they're at the end. This is four digits. Those two count because they're at the end. This is four digits. Those two zeros count because they're at the end. Our final answer, three, four, four. Our final answer should be three digits, and this is three digits. Okay. These are my three significant digits there. Zeros at the, at the beginning, we call them leading zeros. Don't count. 
Okay, what about my average velocity now? Well, that's displacement divided by time. How do you find displacement? Well, you add what? Add displacements, subtract positions. I got displacements here. I'm going to add them together. 300 plus negative 1,200 meters over 1,800 seconds. What's that equal to? Uh, negative 900 divided by 1,800. Negative 0 0.500, or that would be 0 0.500 meters per second to the to the west, right? Well, how come the two different numbers? How come speed and velocity are two different numbers here? Because we change direction. Just like distance and displacement were two different numbers when we change direction, speed and velocity are going to be two different numbers when we change direction. Good. Let's have a look at worksheet number two. For the rest of class and for tonight, I'm only going to ask you to do the first three questions on worksheet number two, please.